It was the morning of August 3rd, 2018. Huge machines were being wheeled into my hospital room, strangers shuffling in, filling the small space, introducing themselves with long, scary titles. The panic set in. I could feel my breathing speed up, my heart was racing, and my thoughts were everywhere. I was about to have a bone marrow biopsy and be put under anesthesia for the very first time. In the midst of my panic, a woman in a blue shirt came over to me. She introduced herself as a child life specialist. I had no idea what this meant, and to be honest, I didn't care at that moment. She gave me a stress ball to hold and asked me what kind of music I liked. Instantly, I said, Taylor Swift. <laughs> so we talked about how amazing she is and how her music is so inspiring until it was time, and I drifted off into La La Land. That morning, cancer changed my life. I was 16 years old and given a diagnosis of T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This is a specific and aggressive form of rapidly progressing blood cancer. Test results showed that my blood was 98% leukemia and my oncologist said if I hadn't come in, I would have been dead by the end of that month. So, that's a lot. <laughs> but here I am, I'm okay. <laughs> And the reason I'm okay is because of my friends and family and the positive attitude I kept. A positive attitude towards cancer. How? Because I didn't know what else to do. Welcome to Bad Blood, Taylor's version. <laughs> but not the Taylor you're probably thinking of. <laughs> Through it all, the daily and weekly chemo, the spinal taps, the biopsies, and all the complications, I needed to and I chose to stay positive. I'd like to share more about this optimistic outlook with you and an area of research I've learned there's a considerable amount of scholarly work being done around, positive deviance. The core concept is based on focusing on what is going right instead of what is going wrong, focusing on strengths instead of negatives. Monique and Jerry Sternin are credited with developing this term from research and field work they did throughout the 90s and early 2000s, most notably while working on a project to eradicate childhood malnutrition. These researchers were tasked with creating a program to rehabilitate the malnourished children in a village in Vietnam. While working with the villagers, they chose to talk to the families with healthy children to see what was being done differently. These families were in the same village, facing the same problems, with access to similar resources, yet some children were healthy and others were not. These researchers decided to look at what was going right instead of what was going wrong. I have come to strongly identify with this approach, and I believe that I inadvertently used it to help me get through cancer. As I learn more about this work and scholarly research, I would confidently propose that I am positively deviant. <laughs> Now, it may seem easy to stand up here and tell you to think positively and see silver linings or find the good, but it's actually really hard to do. My family and I often said we weren't going to sit around and be miserable all the time. When I was feeling down, I did what I could to feel better. And when I couldn't physically feel better, I did what I could to emotionally feel better. A memory that stands out for me, Christmas time 2018, early in my cancer journey. I was developing something called mucositis. I had sores in my whole mouth and down my esophagus. I couldn't talk because they hurt so bad. And before I would eventually end up hospitalized for this, I remember getting together with friends and family to decorate Christmas cookies. But all I could do was watch. I was just too sick. I sat and watched while everyone completed their cookie creations. And I remember hearing my neighbor, my friend, telling my mom how she just wanted to do more to help me, but felt helpless. To anyone out there who feels like they can't help a sick loved one, you can, even if in seemingly insignificant ways. That day at Christmas time, my friends and family were all helping me. They were there, literally and physically there, physically present around me, contributing to my positive deviance of being in a space of good and joy and care. The power of presence, the presence of another human being, especially the ones I love so much. Sometimes that was all I needed, 
So when you can, be there. Trust me, it will be appreciated. Speaking of being there, if you know me, you know I love Taylor Swift. I have since I was five years old. And little does Taylor Swift know, she too was there for me. Her album Lover came out in 2019 while I was in treatment, and I have a distinct memory of getting an ultrasound of my appendix because I had appendicitis on top of everything else. <laughs> Sitting with a child life specialist, listening to Lover, watching the music videos for her songs, Me and You Need to Calm Down. This child life specialist knew my love of Taylor Swift, and as soon as she came in the room, it was the first thing we started talking about, Lover. It was a perfect way to distract me. Any conversation I had involving Taylor Swift would give me the opportunity to be in a space of positive deviance. Some very special people also contributed to my positive deviance and changed my life while going through my cancer journey. Child life specialists. I've mentioned this healthcare role a few times now. They are the light shining in my darkest memories and I cannot say enough good things about them. They are a group of individuals whose sole job is to be there for you, to support you, to make you feel better. They took the time to get to know me caring for me and creating spaces for positive deviance, places for me to see the good. When I would receive mild sedation, I could still feel their presence, and the feeling of their hand on my shoulder or my head was so comforting. Again, that power of presence. My team of child life specialists are the most amazing people, and I love them. But my oncology team, also amazing. People may think I wouldn't like going back for labs or checkups, but I do. I love these people. They are so kind and wonderful, and I remain close with so many of them. Their presence is so calming and powerful and reassuring, and they too contributed to me being in a space of positive deviance. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, my family and I were already so used to quarantining because I had been immune compromised for almost two years at that point. Finally, the world was getting a small taste of what it was like to be me, but not in a good way. The immediate downside of the pandemic for me, elective surgeries were put on hold and joint replacements are elective. At this stage of my cancer journey, at the age of 18, I now needed both of my hips replaced. I had developed what is called avascular necrosis due to a steroid I was taking as a part of my leukemia treatment. The steroid that I needed to save my life had the rare side effect of cutting off the blood supply to my hips and the ball joint of my hip bones died. Yes, bones can die. With deceased hips, 24 seven pain and elective surgeries temporarily on hold, I was in a wheelchair for a period of time and on crutches for a year. It was time for my positive deviance to kick in, but how to be positively deviant when your hips don't work? Well, I learned how to crochet. You don't have to move to do that. <laughs> and I would still go swimming. It actually felt really good to be in the water, even if it was hard getting in and out of the pool. But remember, let's focus on what's working and what was good. That summer, my family and I chose to have a great time our practice of positive deviance, their power of presence. I had my 18th birthday that same summer. Taylor Swift released her surprise album Folklore on my birthday. <laughs> she probably knew it was my birthday. <laughs> I'd like to think that Taylor and I both share in our positive deviance. I began my first year at St. Norbert College during COVID, which was also a week after getting a hip replacement. When I began college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I did know that I've always wanted to help people, but I wasn't sure how that would come to fruition through a job or career. And it was during this time I started to make some connections about things important to me and my future. And I began to realize that everything I love doing revolves around helping people and the power of presence and embracing what's good and working. And it hit me. I should be a child life specialist. I could be the one supporting and caring and providing assurance to children who are having an awful time. I knew intimately how incredibly important it was to feel cared for and helped while in the hospital and how the power of a child life specialist presence deeply impacted my own cancer journey. 
yes. That is what I want and what I am actively pursuing during my time as a student. A child life specialist, the perfect job for this tailor, to use my power of presence to create a space for sick patients to tap into their own versions of positive deviance, to find their good. And life's irony, I never would have known about child life specialists without being sick. Going through treatment changed the way that I see things. You have to live life to the fullest because you really only do live once. And while doing so, I chose to frame my experience in positive deviance, and that kept me positively alive. I am happy to say that I am now two years out of treatment and in remission. My last day of treatment was on December 10th, 2020, and also happened to be the same day that Taylor Swift announced her album, Evermore. Thank you.